So listening is not the act of hearing the words spoken. It is the art of understanding the meaning behind those words. Um, and, uh, you know, when people say, you're not listening to me, and we simply parrot back the words that they were said, congratulations, your ears worked. You know, that is the act, that is the act of listening. Um, but the art of listening is, is creating an environment in which the other person feels heard. Now, you notice what I said there. The other person, and I used an emotional word, feels, right? I don't want to know that you heard the words. I want to feel, I want to feel heard. I want to feel seen. I want to feel understood. And that is a learnable, practicable, learnable, practicable skill. So it's, uh, there are many parts of it. It's things like replacing judgment with curiosity, right? That's a hard thing to do. We're a pretty judgy group, right? Um, to be curious where someone has a point of view. It's creating a safe space for someone to, as my, as my friend Dia Khan calls it, empty the bucket. So even if we find what they're saying just reprehensible, right, you're never going to be able to actually have dialogue until at least one of the parties gets the opportunity to say everything without judgment. And, it, and as she calls it, emptying the bucket. And once person, somebody feels like they've completely said everything, then they're more apt to listen to you. But usually what we do is we defend or we litigate or we interrupt we point out flaws in logic, which is just frustrating. And when you point out some flaws in somebody's logic, because we're all imperfect when we speak, and we all choose the wrong words at various times. And that's not what I meant. You know what I meant. This is what we have to say. Well, what if you know what you meant, then why don't you say what you... You can see how this spirals. Um, uh, um, but it's things like when somebody says something, you know, and there, there's really easy ways to do it. Things like, go on, tell me more. What else? And they keep talking. And you go quiet. They feel the space. And tell me more. Go on. And eventually, it's all out. And then you, there's a safe space for you to respond or to, and express yourself in a constructive way. But, but that's correct. We, we, we do not teach listening. And listening is the way to create, um, uh, to, uh, to build trust with someone. You know? You make someone feel heard, they'll trust you. You know? Um, it is the way to find common ground um, in opposition, in simple cases in business, but in more complicated cases uh, in national politics or in global politics or in war. You know, why do, you know, we, my, uh, Bill Urey, William Urey, who wrote Getting to Yes, he, he talks about the same thing. He goes, we have talk shows, but we don't have listen shows. He says, we have peace talks, but what we really need is peace listens. You know, and, and he who's been at the table of, at the highest levels of peace negotiations, he said, people show up and start demanding what they want, and that's how the negotiations begin. Nobody starts by saying, so tell me why you came here. There's a great documentary that I recommend to learn this. It's called White Right, Meeting the Enemy by Dia Khan. <clears throat> in a nutshell, Dia uh, is a Muslim woman living in the UK who was trolled by white supremacists to the point where the police got involved because her life was at risk. They told her, stay away from open windows. That's how bad it got. The way Dia responded was by moving to the United States and going to meet the white supremacists. And she brought her cameras. I mean, you can see it all happen in this documentary. And basically, she gave them a safe space to feel heard. Now, that sounds mad. Like, why should she give them a safe space to feel heard? They should give her a safe space. Yeah, fine, good. You know, like, it's never going to happen. Dia sits down with these white supremacists and she gives them a safe space to feel heard. It's extreme listening. Um, and I say it's extreme because, I mean, they hate her, you know? They don't just disagree with her. Uh, they want her off the planet. Um, and, uh, and she lets them empty their bucket, as she calls it, and then conversation begins. And because they feel heard, they start to trust her. And as they start to trust her, she becomes a friend. And then what it creates uh, uh, this paradox where I'm supposed to hate this woman, but I trust her and consider her a friend. And what you see is one by one, these white supremacists, these diehard white supremacists, start dropping out of the movement because they can no longer reconcile their beliefs with reality. And if, if it can happen in this extreme environment, then it can happen anywhere. And um, all that is required for us to cross political divides or, you know, uh, disagreements at work and things like that is one of the parties has to learn how to listen. It doesn't even require both parties to learn the skill. That's the amazing thing. 
And uh, it, is, it is one of the most remarkable, remarkable skills that anyone can learn, the power of listening, yeah. So what, the documentary is a great extreme example of, the, of, what, of what it can do.